Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good evening to everyone. It's 11, it's 4 past 11 p.m. and you are with me, Mr. Warit, for another session for Section C, PSR 014, which is the writing paper. Okay, um, first thing first, uh, if you're listening to this, um, make sure you go into the info box of the YouTube, uh, you find a link and that link will bring you to the task sheet of this, of this recording. And what I want you to do is that you download that task sheet, do it first, find the errors first, only then you continue listening to my nagging. Okay, so if you have not done yet, then you better do it first because that's the first step before you can watch and continue watching this. Okay. Um, what we're going to do today is that uh, we're going to look at Section C, Activity 3, and today's topic is going to be on helping a handicapped man. Uh, this activity is adapted or uh, taken from uh, Patricia Thieu, um English writing book. Um, and... Um, we're probably going to use Patricia Thieu's uh, or Sasbadi's uh, book uh, until the end of the 20 episodes because uh, I think it's more comp more feasible for us and also feasible for you to go to the bookstores and get a copy of, of the book if that is what you are looking for. All right, so I'm not going to waste our time and let's, let's make sure that uh, we finish everything within 40 minutes. 30 to 40 minutes, so I don't have to stretch this up until one hour. Okay, I'm going to share this. All right, so this is our section C, 014, and you are given uh, a picture with 10 words. Now, one thing that I would like you to understand is that even though you are given the 10 words, it does not mean you have to use all the words, okay? You can skip any words that you do not know, okay? The words that is unfamiliar uh, from your vocabulary repertoire, so you don't have to use the words, okay? So, but, but the thing is that some of you think that it's a compulsory to use all the words here. No, okay? It's not compulsory. You can skip the words that you do not understand. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I would really encourage you to use your own word. Okay, You look at the picture, you can come with any story as long as the story uh, corresponds to the picture. Okay, If the story do not correspond to the picture, then of course lah, uh, you are, you know, you, you are in a deep hell. But if your story corresponds to the pictures and makes sense, then there's, there's no wrong for not using all the words given here, okay? All right, so as usual, we are going to find errors in this uh, essay. But let's have a look at the, uh, the words here first so that you know what is chatting. Chatting is berborak-borak, okay, ber -ber bercakap, berbual. Notice, notice means perasan, okay. Wheelchair, wheelchair means, ni lah, this, this is the wheelchair, okay. Kereta sorong, eh, not kereta sorong, kerusi roda. Kereta sorong is with vero. <laughs> Alright, cross, cross means perbuatan melintas jalan, eh, okay. Not realise, not realise ni tidak perasan lah, okay. Hole, hole maksudnya lubang, so, there must be a hole dekat pedestrian walk ni, okay, at the zebra crossing. Wobble, wobble ni macam koget-koget sikit lah. Ha, yang implantan ni koget 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 ataupun tiap seimbang. Overturn, overturn maksudnya uh, terbalik, okay. Uh, you can say the, apa ni, the wheelchair overturn, something like that. Alright, tapi yang terbalik is the wheelchair lah, together with the man. Help adalah tolong. Thankful adalah uh, rasa bersyukur. Okay. Alright. Let's have a look. As I have mentioned earlier, there's no need for you to be worried about words that you do not know. Um, close your eyes. Don't look at the words that you do not know. Just look at the picture and make sure your story correspond, 
empty picture. Okay. All right. We have a simple essay here. If I count the words that I have prepared, this is a 100 uh, word essay. Uh, but we're going to change certain things and make sure that you, uh, what do you call? I make sure that you come up with a proper version of the story itself. So first thing first, let's read the whole essay first. So one afternoon, Raza and Halim were walking home from schools. He saw old man on wheelchair. A man one crossed the road. Raza and Halim pity a man, so they plan to help his. However, before he can help old man, the light turned green. The man crossed the road himself. Unfortunately, one of the tire and the hole, the man wobbled and fell down wheelchair. Raza and Halim quick help a man. The man felt thankful and lucky he not hurt. Raza pushed the wheelchair across the road. The man thanked Raza and his friend Profuse. Okay. All right. So let's begin with the first sentence. No, the first thing first. Apakah, what is the mistake that I can, the glaring mistake that I can see here? The glaring mistake that I can see here is that you did not indent the paragraph. Okay, paragraph can indent lah. You have to indent the paragraph. So you need to tap this. Okay, the first paragraph. The second paragraph is also need indent. And the third paragraph, the last one, also need an indent. Okay. So one afternoon, Raza and Halev were walking home from school. All right. Now, what is the mistake that we can find here? So Raza and Halim are the last subject here. So nothing, nothing, uh, not an issue. Were walking home from school. Oh, actually, ada dua kesilapan glaring kat sini. Now, if you look at here first, Raza and Halim. Let's, let's look at Raza and Halim. So Raza and Halim, and then you look at the picture. How many boys can you count? One, two, and three. So basically, Raza and Halim does not fit into the bill itself. Because ada tiga orang kawan. So what happened to the other one? So kita kena be very careful with this one because we do not want to contradict the picture. Kita tak nak, um, kita, kita kata apa, uh, menyalahi gambar. Because the gambar shows that there are three kids there. So by hook or by hook, you need to uh, also report a similar value, a similar amount kat situ. So... What's going to happen here is that it's going to be Raza and his friends, okay? So we automatically uh, give a name to the character, to one of the characters. So basically Raza and his friends. So I'm going to highlight this, okay? One afternoon, Raza and his friends were walking home from school, okay? Now, I am not a fan when you say were walking home, okay? Kenapa tak boleh sedang berjalan? Ah, okay. Kalau this, this I think is an interference of first language. So you can check up. Pada satu hari, Ali sedang bermain. I think even in Bahasa Malaysia, that would be considered wrong. Uh, uh, even in Bahasa Malaysia, you cannot use continuous tense at that particular sentence. You can guna pada satu hari, Ali berjalan. Okay, berjalan pulang dari sekolah. You see? Ada sedang tak? Tak ada sedang. There's no need to use continuous sentence at that point. Because, kenapa? Because penanda masa dia adalah pada suatu hari. Kalau kita nak guna, we're walking. If we want to use continuous tense, we're walking here. Then, dia punya penanda masa or the time frame should correspond. Dia kena, kita kata apa? Selari, parallel. Okay, in English we call it parallel. So the time frame dengan tenses is very much, are very much related. Okay, you cannot separate it. So the moment your sentence has a time frame, you have to be very careful. You have to double check and see whether your um, your tenses or your tense has been used correctly with the time frame given. Okay, so one afternoon is not a, a time frame for world walking. Okay. So, one afternoon, you can guna simple past. Okay. So, macam mana kita nak ubah? There are two ways of how you can change this. 
first, you can say one afternoon, Raza and his friend walked home from school. That's number one. Maksudnya kita buang were walking ni, kita jadikan dia sebagai simple past tense, which is walk. Okay, but I prefer to maintain the time frame kat sini. And then continuous tense, kalau kita nak guna continuous tense, the things that kita kena buat adalah kita tukar one afternoon ni supaya dia menjadi time frame untuk continuous tense. Okay, for example, we can just change one afternoon kepada that afternoon. Tengah hari itu. Okay, tengah hari itu, not satu petang ataupun satu tengah hari. Okay, pada satu tengah pada suatu tengah hari, no, kita kena gunakan pada tengah hari itu. Okay, so we have to use the word that afternoon. Nah, barulah the time frame correspond together with the tenses. So that afternoon, Raza and his friends were walking home from school. Okay, school salah. Why school salah? Because ada S. Uh, berapa banyak sekolah? Uh, they from. We assume that they are studying in the same school. So, we do not need S there. Okay, just school. Okay, walk home from school. Okay. Uh, 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 oops, sorry. Right. So, that afternoon, Raza and his friends were walking home from school. So, kita tukar that afternoon because kita nak correspond the word, sorry, the time frame with the tenses with yang kita prefer, were walking, right? And as I've mentioned earlier, there's another version of going about this. You can also use, um, you can, oh, actually there are three versions. Okay, let me, let me copy paste this and then let me show you um, the possibility. What are the possibilities? Okay. So, this one, the first version yang you boleh buat adalah, okay, uh, Raza and his friend, you can just begin your, your essay with Raza and his friends were walking home from school. So, this one, correct, no issue, okay. Two, you can also say one afternoon, okay, Raza and his friends walk home from school. Another version that you can use adalah, which is the one that I used just now, that afternoon. Awak nampak tak perbezaan one afternoon dengan that afternoon? One afternoon is like pada suatu tengah hari. But that afternoon is like pada tengah hari itu. Pada waktu itulah maksudnya. Pada waktu tengah hari itu. Uh, then, the tenses can be used in continuous form. Continuous form ni apa? Sedang, ayat sedang. Contohnya, pada waktu itu saya sedang makan. Ha, kenapa kau guna sedang? Because time frame dia adalah pada waktu itu. So, it's a similar situation when you say pada tengah hari itu. So, pada tengah hari itu, Ali, sorry, Razak dan kawan-kawannya sedang berjalan. Okay, so you change that. Okay, so that afternoon, Raza and his friends were walking home from school. Right? Okay. So there are three possibilities if I mention. Ikut you lah, you not choose which one. If you think A is suitable for you, then it's fine. If you think B is suit, suits your taste, then it's fine. If you think C is more, glare, uh, is more like um, advanced and stylo to you, then you use C. Okay? All right. But I'm going to stick with that afternoon. Raza and his friends were walking home from school. He saw old man on wheelchair. Okay. So he, he ni tak ada masalah lah actually. Because I think we can say he refer to Raza. Tetapi in order to avoid confusion, in order to, to, net, to not let your examiner argue with you. Okay. Of course, lah, the examiner will not call you, but don't let the examiner argue within himself because sometimes you can get a very good examiner uh, who has a good command in English. Uh, that, that definitely understand that if you look from this perspective, then you can 
still accept the sentences, but sometimes you can get uh, someone who is very rigid with the grammar uh, stuff. So, so that might not be a good, you know, situations for you and your essay. So, in order to avoid uh, your essay being in such a situation or being undiscrutinized, then there, there's a definitely, uh, the, definitely the best way is that you, you make your sentence clear to your examiner. So let's just be consistent. He, tetap payah terima he because we are talking about Raza and his friend lah. Okay, so instead of using he, we use the word they. Okay, they saw mereka nampak. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, but let's just be consist consistent. Because dalam cerita ni, we are talking about Raza and his friend. So bila kita guna pronoun, let's use the pronoun that correspond to Raza and his friend. Okay, so they saw old man on wheelchair. Okay, um, kita nampak orang tua atas kursi roda. Okay, that's, this is definitely uh, one of the, uh, what do we call this, the influence of uh, Malay language or the first language into English language. Uh, dan paling worst sekali, kita punya first language ni pun, first language yang dalam konteks bahasa pasar not a proper one. I think if you use a proper Bahasa Malaysia or standard Bahasa Malaysia, um, then definitely the the rules and the grammatical thingy is not going to be a problem to you because personally, from my opinion, I think our Bahasa Malaysia and English um, grammar, uh, they are somehow to a certain extent correlate with one another. Okay, so they saw old man. As I've mentioned earlier, Apabila se, when when the subject or when the object of the sentence is singular, then you can make sure the singular noun has article a uh, and order. Okay, so this is the first time old man being mentioned in the story. So you cannot use the word the. You have to use the word a. Uh, uh, sorry, an old man. Why an old man? Because this corresponds dengan perkataan old, okay? So, you cannot say a old man. You have to say an old man. Seorang lelaki tua. Remember, kalau you nak translate daripada bahasa Malaysia to English, apabila kata nama tu satu, singular, then it requires article. Okay, article ni apa? A, an, ataupun the, okay? So, they saw an old man. Why do we put an article N here? Because old man is singular. Okay. So, they saw an old man on wheelchair. Okay. Are there two errors here? But let's settle the first one. The first one is that wheelchair. Okay. Wheelchair ni, it has the same attribute like the old man, which is singular. And I, as I have mentioned earlier, a singular noun requires what? requires an article. So, what you need to do is, you have to put a wheelchair here. Now, why not, why didn't we put the word N? Why didn't you, we use an article N here? Because the word wheelchair doesn't have any sounds of A, A, E, O, R. So, there's no need to use N. Here we use a. Okay. But we have another issue, which is on a wheelchair, okay? Now, kalau on the chair, of course lah, because you always you always look at uh, when when things happen in the classroom, it's like this. Um, dalam class, normally you say sit on your chair, right? Because your, your chair, the chair in the classroom, are the chairs without any armrest. Okay, dia tak ada tangan, dia tak ada armrest. Okay, so when a chair is without an uh, without armrest, then you memang kena guna perkataan on lah. Okay, so on the chair. But if the chair comes with armrest, okay, um, armrest ni maksudnya tempat letak tangan. Kalau you tengok dekat the wheelchair here, kan, can you see tempat untuk lelaki ni put his hands? kan, tempat untuk dia letak rehat kan, okay, arm rest, kita panggil arm, A-R-M, rest, R-E-S-T, arm rest, okay, macam juga kursi sofa rumah you, kursi sofa, right, ada arm rest kan, tapi kursi, macam kursi dalam kelas, 
there is no armrest lah. There are no armrest. So, that's why uh, perbezaan kerusi ni juga memainkan peranan kepada proposition ni. Okay. So, kalau kerusi tu tak ada armrest, you can use the word on. Okay. But if the chair, okay, contains ataupun have uh, armrest, then it's more proper to use the word in. Okay. So, that's why sometimes you will meet uh, a sentence saying uh, the old man sit in the chair. So, bila kita kata the old man sit in the chair, we know the chair that that man is sitting contains armrest. Tapi if we say that the, the man sits on the chair, then um, definitely we know that the chair is without any armrest. Okay. <coughs> so, on is not the best option. The best is that in. So, they saw an old man in a wheelchair. Kenapa kita guna in? Because wheelchair dia ni ada tempat letak tangan. Armrest. Uh, any kerusi yang ada tempat letak tangan. Macam sofa, uh, in your home, at your home. And then, uh, like your teachers. Your your teachers chair dekat dalam kelas kan. Normally ada armrest kan. So, that's also why you have to say the teacher is sitting in his chair rather than on his chair. Alright. So, they saw an old man in a wheelchair. A man won cross the road. <coughs> so, basically, dia nak cakapnya, lelaki itu mahu lintas jah, jalan. Luckily, the word cross here, kalau you tengok kat sini, cross, digunakan dengan ber, betul. You have to understand perbezaan antara cross dan juga a, a cross. Okay. Jangan, jangan tertukar. Cross is something, a cross is something else. Okay. Alright. So, cross has been used correctly here as a verb, sebagai kata kerja. A man wanted. Okay. First thing first. Ah, no. The first thing kat sini. Kenapa kat sini salah? Kenapa a ni salah? Because, ini kali ke berapa dah man ni muncul dalam cerita ni? This is the, the second time dah lelaki ni muncul dalam cerita ni. So, the man. Alright. The man. Kenapa? Because this is the the second time we are talking about this man. The man one uh, one ni is in present ten. This whole story is in past ten. Remember, when it comes to section C, you have to write in past ten. Bila past ten, kalau kita bercakap pasal tenses dia, dia memerlukan ed. Kalau ayat sedang, dia perlukan was, were dan juga ing. Kalau ayat telah, dia memerlukan had plus ed. Okay. So, the man want tak boleh lah. Jadi, wanted. Wanted ni, remember tak last time kita bercakap, kalau want, um, if we're talking about the word want, um, if the word is followed with a verb, then there is a need for you to add what? To. Kan? To add to. So, the man wanted to cross the, the road. Kenapa kena ada wanted to cross? Because the word cross is a verb. Unless we are talking about the man want a biscuit. Uh, dia, nak, dia nak biskut. That is a noun. If it is a noun, then there's no need for you to put the word to here. Okay. But unfortunately, in this sentence, um, the word cross is a verb. So, wanted must be followed by to. And then cross has to be written in root form. Cross ni kena ada ed tak? Because tadi Mr. Warik cakap uh, cross ni adalah uh, a verb. Yes, cross ni adalah a verb. Tetapi dia tak perlu ada ed kerana before that you have look you have to look at here to ni. So to ni membuatkan kata kerja kembali kepada bentuk asal dia tanpa sebarang tambahan. Without any addition ataupun extensions, okay? No ed, no ing, no s, okay? So the man wanted to cross the road, okay? Raza and Halim pity a man. Okay, Raza and Halim, one more time. We are not just talking about two boys. We are talking about three boys here. So it's always best to remain consistent throughout your story. So instead of you saying... Um, Raza and his, uh, sorry, Raza and Halim. Why don't you say Raza and his friends? Okay, so be consistent. 
Salam. Apa-apa pun is always good to be consistent. So, Raza and his friends, PT, PT, what happened to PT? He has to be in past, past tense. Okay. A man. So, ini adalah kali ketiga. So, we cannot say a man. Okay, sorry, sorry. So, we cannot say a man. Because this is the third time the man exists in the story. So, we have to use the word, the article, the. Okay. So, the article, the is more suitable here. Uh, wait. So, the man, so they plan to help his. Okay. So, Raza and his friend pitied the man. So, okay. Bila so adalah ayat compound dalam fan voice. Dia ayat compound ni, uh, conjunction so ni, apa tugas dia? Dia menggluekan dua simple sentence together. Dan syarat dia adalah sebelum tu kena ada call, comma. Okay. Mana ayat simple sentence yang pertama? Raza and his friend pitied the man. Ini ayat dia yang pertama. So, they plan to help his ni adalah ayat simple yang kedua. kedua. Okay. Alright. So, ni adalah conjunction dan dia menggabungkan. They combine. It combines uh, Raza and his friends dan juga they plan to help his together. Okay. Tapi masih ada lagi beberapa kesalahan here. Okay. So, they. Betul lah. They. Because we're talking about Raza and his friends. Plan. Plan. Apa kesilapan plan kat sini? Yes, not in past tense. Kena ada E, E, D. Why do we have to use E, D? Why do we have to use simple past tense, kids? Because this is a made up story. This is a created. You created the story. Okay. It, it, it's not a, a true event. So, we call it as a creation. You created the story. That's why it's okay to use, let's say you want to start your essay with Raza and his friends were active kids, okay, or were kind, were bo were kind-hearted boys. Sebab kalau orang tu tanya balik dekat you, so mana mana so Raza sekarang dengan kawan-kawan dia tak baik lah sebab those are in the past ten. Well, it's a made-up story, so it is fine to use it in that way. You can always refer to the Enid Blyton. Even if you want to use the current, uh, more recent writers, and you can always look at J.K. Rowling. I think J.K. Rowling is very conservative in terms of writing a made-up story. That's why Harry Potter, if you read the, from the first book until the last uh, book, it is well written in past time. Okay? Alright. Tapi tak salah juga if you want to write... Um, Raza and his friend is or are kind-hearted boys because um, recent trend juga you you can you can start melihat perubahan tu um, like uh, current people current writers penulis pada zaman sekarang ni are more towards giving uh, personal touch or real touch kepada cerita tersebut so it really ups to you but personally if you ask me as um I would definitely say that remain conservative when it comes to writing a made-up story, okay? So, you buat, kalau cerita tu cerita yang, yang, yang you reka, then you boleh guna, you can be conservative by, by applying the past 10 rules. But if it's a story that, tapi tak juga salah lah if you want to use present 10 dekat permulaan tu. Like the one that I mentioned, Raza and his friends are kind-hearted boys. Ataupun Raza and his friends were kind-hearted voice, uh, kind-hearted boys, tak ada masalah, okay? It really depends on your school of thought, okay? So, they plan, tak ada masalah, to help him, okay? Not his. Kalau his, dia perlu digunakan bersama dengan kata nama. Contohnya, kita nak cakap bag dia. So, baru kita kata his bag. Atau apa, pencil dia. His pencil, okay? Kalau dia berada di hujung ayat, then kita guna perkataan him. Kalau dia berada di hadapan ayat, kita guna he. Okay? Alright. Sorry, I think I have to put his like this so that you can see clearly the changes. Okay. I'm going to put it like this. They plan. Okay, plan pun sama juga. They plan to help him. Okay, so they plan to help him. 
However, walau bagaimanapun, however must be followed by a comma. Okay. However, walau bagaimanapun, before he can help old man. Okay. Again, kembali kepada consistency, being parallel with whatever it is. So, instead of using the word he, use the word they. Okay. Before they. Okay. Can. Can. Past ten. Good. Before they could, all right, not they can. Before they could, oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna color these words with red. Okay, so before they could help, help, okay, cikgu, help ada ED kat sini, cikgu. So, this is correct. No, it's wrong. Why? Because, there's, look at the word before the word help. Could exist, okay? So, could is there. What is the rule of the verb after the word could? It has to be in root form. Sama macam to, ni lah. To cross, tak ada ed. Kenapa tak ada ed? Because there's a word to. So, could help also apply the same rules. Also use the same rules. Uh, so, you have to, what? You have to kick out the ed here. Kenapa kena kick out the ED? Because before the word help, there's another word, we call it could. Okay, and could, after the word could, the verb should be in its root form. Okay, so no ED, no S, no ING. Right, however, before they could help old men. Kenapa old men ni salah? What's the problem with the old man? Yes, old man is singular. And any singular noun requires what? Requires an article. So, what should you do? A and the. Then you have to look at another level. Adakah this is the first time the word old man appears in the story? Or is this the second time the old man appears in the story? So, if the old man appears for the second, third, fourth time, then there's definitely the need for you to use the word The article the. Okay. So, kita guna the. Sebab ni dah kali ke berapa dah ni keluar dalam cerita ni. I will before they could help the old man. The light turned green. Okay. So, what kind of light are we talking here? Alright. Kita tu bukan nak cakap pasal traffic light. But we are talking about light orang pejalan kaki. So, that is what we call as the pedestrian signal. Okay. Not light, but if pedestrian signal, okay. Pedestrian signal ni adalah pejalan kaki. Because if you look at the picture here, the kids then, the old man ni dekat zebra crossing. So definitely we are talking about pedestrian signal, okay. Not light. Okay. The pedestrian signal turn green, okay. So tak ada masalah. Tapi cikgu. Ah, dia cakap, kenapa kita guna a pedestrian signal? Ah, eh, kenapa tak guna a, kenapa guna the? Because this is the first time kan, Mr. Warik? Oh, that's a little bit tough to explain, but uh, it, it doesn't sound right, a pedestrian signal. Lah. I think it is more accurate if you see the pedestrian signal, but let's uh, keep, keep this thing under the carpet first. Okay. All right. The man crossed the road himself. Okay. The man. You tak ada masalah. Cross the road himself. Okay. Uh, cross ada ED. Tak ada masalah. The road. Okay. Tak ada masalah. Himself. Is there a problem with the word himself? Tak ada masalah. Meaning, dia tak minta tolong pun. Lelaki ni, despite of being handicapped, He is very independent and he tried to cross the road himself, okay? No problem with this sentence. Unfortunately, one of the tire, okay, one of the tire. So, one of the tire ni adalah ayat collective noun. Okay, lom kita tengok collective noun ni macam mana terlebih dahulu. Collective noun ni, if we refer to bahasa Malaysia, dia akan jadi ayat macam ni, sejambak bunga. Ada berapa jambak? Ada satu jambak. Tetapi ada banyak apa ada banyak bunga dalam satu jambak tu. So when we talk about collective noun, it, the the rules the same the same rule apply. Okay. For example, kalau kita kata a group, 
Okey satu kumpulan. Ada berapa kumpulan? Satu kumpulan je. Tetapi bila kita bercakap pasal orang yang ada kat dalam kumpulan tu a group of pelajar, students. Students kena ada S. Kenapa student kena ada S Mr. Warren? Because walaupun group tu ada satu tetapi dalam group tu ada ramai students. Okey. So students kat sini memang kena ada S. Right? So, kalau kita apply the same rule dekat cerita ni. One of the tires. Okay. So, salah satu daripada tire tu. Okay. This is this is also a collective noun lah. So, salah satu daripada tire. Tire-tire yang banyak tu lah. So, what should we add here? We should add as. Okay. One of the tires. Okay. One of the tires. Enter. Masuk. Uh, masuk ni apa? Entered lah. Entered hole. Uh, hole ni apa? Hole. Hole ni lubang. Lubang kat dalam cerita ni ada banyak tak? Many or just one? Just one. So, what is the rule that you should apply here? Singular noun rule. Okay. So, any singular noun would require what? It would require an article. So, entered a, a hole. Okay, not just hold, masuk lubang. Okay, that is direct translation. Okay, you can cakap masuk satu lubang. Okay, now kita nak buat ayat tu a little bit gempak. Masuk, masuk secara macam mana? Masuk sengaja ke tak sengaja? Secara tak sengaja. So, one of the tires accidentally entered a hole. Tambahlah secara tak sengaja. Ha, secara accidentally. Entered a, a hole. Barulah ayat dia macam gempak. Wow. Unfortunately, one of the tires accidentally entered a, a hole. The man wobble. The man wobble. Atas silapan dia apa kat sini? No. The wobble lah. Dia tu jadi terhoyong-hoyong sikit macam tu kan. Hilang kat sini banget. And fell down. Wheelchair. Okay. Fell down ni daripada atas ke bawah. Tapi sekarang ni dia adalah berada dari dalam ke luar. So, kita tak guna fell down. Kita guna fell off. Okay. Fell off. Kenapa kita tak guna fell down? Sebab fell down ni daripada atas ke bawah. Contohnya, fell off. Uh, fell, sorry, fell down the tree. Okay. Now, fell off the wheelchair. Kenapa kita guna the Mr. Warwick? Because wheelchair ni kali keberapa dah exist in this story. This is the second, second time that wheelchair to exist. Okay. So, and fell off the wheelchair. The man wobbled and fell off the wheelchair. Raza and Halim, once again, let's be consistent. We cannot say Halim. We have to say the word, what? Raza and his friends. Okay. His friends. Alah, masalahnya, berarti. Okay, we have to go here, and then here. So, Raza and his friends, quick help a man. Okay, help, apa masalah dia? No ED. Okay, a man. Tak boleh guna a man lah, because this is how many times lah? Dah banyak time lah kan? And it's, also, it's always the man, the man, the man. Let's, kali sekali we put the old man, okay? Once in a while. Once in a blue moon. Okay. Alright. Tapi we have another problem here which is quick. Quick ni adalah adjective. Kalau you nak cakap kan he is quick then it becomes an adjective. Tetapi sekarang ni kita nak cakapnya membantu tu yang cepat. Bukannya kawan dia cepat tetapi bantuan tu menolong tu cepat. So kita kena guna add adverb sebab kita nak describe kata kerja ni. Kalau ayat tak ada quick kan. Kalau tak ada quick. Oh sorry. Kalau tak ada quick, ayat dia akan bunyi macam ni. Raza and his friends help the old man. Okay, which is grammatically correct, not an issue. But now kita nak describe the word help dekat situ. Dia tolong. Tolong macam mana? Tolong dengan cepat. Okay, cepat-cepat dia tolong kawan. Cepat-cepat dia tolong lelaki tua tu. This is what we're trying to say here. So quick, dia tak boleh digunakan dalam konteks adjektif. It can, it can no longer be used in adjective form. It has to be used in what? Adverb form. Kalau adverb, 
apa tanggungjawab dia? Tanggungjawab dia adalah untuk describe verb lah. Sebab tu kita panggil dia adverb. Tambah verb. Bukan tambah verb tapi nak cakap ni tambah uh, lebih maklumat kepada verb. Okay. Kalau you perasan kan. Kalau you rasa confused ni nampak ni adverb. Apa maksud add dekat sini? Add kat sini maksudnya tam, tambah. Tambah kepada perbuatan verb. That's why kalau kita nak cakap sing. Kan? Sing menyanyi. Adverb dia apa? Sing is a verb. Kan? Okay. So adverb dia apa? Loud ini. Menyanyi dengan kuat. Okay. So apabila kita guna adverb, normally kita tambah apa? Kita tambah ly dekat sini. Uh, sebelum ke selepas, Mr. Warid. Uh, depends lah kan. Okay. There are times when you have to put before the verb. There are times that you have to put after the verb. Okay. Raza and his friends quickly help the old man. Okay. So kita guna adverb. Not adjective dah. The man felt thankful. Felt thankful. Okay. Felt ni fall fell. Fall fell. Fall ni jatuh. Past tender fell. Okay. Feel. Feel. Berasa. Past tender adalah felt. Okay. So mana you nak guna? Jatuh ke berasa? So you want to use perkataan berah, berasa. Okay. The man felt, not felt. Ah, okay. This one is terjatuh. This is not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is felt. The man felt thankful. And lucky he not hurt. Um, and the man felt thankful and he felt thankful and he felt lucky that he did not hurt. Kita tambah, he was not hurt. Okay. That he was not hurt. And then, the man felt thankful and lucky that he was not hurt. Okay. Kita tambah that kat sini. That he was lucky. He felt thankful and he felt lucky that he was not hurt. Raza push the wheelchair across the road. Okay. Kita nak guna across ke? Cross. Masih lagi push. I'm uh, sorry. He pushed across. Okay. Dia tak, dia tak guna across. Okay. Sekejap eh. Saya bagitahu dekat E. Raza push. Raza is the subject. Push dekat sini adalah the verb. Okay, inilah the verb dia. Okay. So, push apa? Push across lah. Bukan ni push cross. Cross ni adalah verb. Kan? This is a verb. So, dalam satu sentence, jarang kita kata boleh ada verbs tanpa sebab yang munasabah. Macam dalam konteks before this, the man felt and fulfilled adalah the verb here. Uh, that he was and, and was is another verb here. Dia boleh ada dua verb tetapi kenapa dia boleh ada dua verb? Sebab ada conjunction and here. Okay. And ni conjunction ni tujuan dia apa? Menggabungkan dua ayat pendek. Bila ada dua ayat pendek, so logik lah ada dua kata kerja. But Razak push the wheelchair cross the road. Ini adalah satu a ayat sahaja. Bila ada satu ayat maka kita hanya ada satu kata kerja saja. So, cross tak boleh guna. Kenapa cross tak boleh guna? Sebab ini adalah kata ker kerja. Kalau kita nak guna, maka kita kena guna across. Menyeberangi. Okay. Push across the, the road. Razak push the wheelchair across the, the road. Ayat asal dia adalah push across. Okay. Push across ni maksudnya dia tolak melintasi jalan. Okay. Dia bukan push cross. Ini kita panggil apa? Phrasal verb. Okay. Push across. Bukannya push cross. Kalau you kata push cross, push tu kata kerja, cross tu kata kerja, then dia tak jadi phrasal verb. Tetapi push adalah kata kerja. Across adalah preposition. So, apabila kita gabungkan kedua-dua tu sekali, dia menjadi phrasal verb. Barulah perkataan tu betul. So, push the wheelchair across the, the road. Okay. Kita tekan kat sini sekejap. Wait, yeah. This, we don't really have any problem. The man thank. Ah, 
Lelaki itu berterima kasih. Thank kerana dapat ID. Don't forget. Thank Raza and his friend. Okay. Friend dia seorang je. Ha, kan ada dua orang lagi. So what should we put? S here. Okay. We should put S here. Profuse. Okay. Profuse ni dia nak describe kata kerja. Thank. Berterima kasih bersungguh-sungguh. So apabila kita nak describe kata kerja. Maka kita guna adverb. Apa tanggungjawab adverb? Mendescribe. Okay, to describe the, the verb. So, what should you do? You kena tambah ly lah dekat belakang ni kan. So, profusely. Alright. Then, barulah it makes sense. Okay. Now, let's count this whole thing first. Kita clean up dulu. Okay, first. Let me read out what we have um, corrected. Okay, that afternoon, Raza and his friends were walking home from school. They saw an old man in a wheelchair. Not on a wheelchair, in a wheelchair. Kerana apa? Kerusi dia tu ada tempat rehat ta, tangan. Kita panggil armrest. Okay. The man wanted to cross the road. Raza and his friends pitied the man, so they planned to help him. However, before they could help the old man, the pedestrian signal turned green. The man crossed the road himself. Unfortunately, one of the tires accidentally entered a hole. Okay. The man wobbled and fell off the wheelchair. Not fell down, tapi fell off the wheelchair. Sebab dia terkeluar daripada wheelchair dia. Bukannya fell down. Fell down ni daripada atas ke bawah. Macam you jatuh pokok, then you can use the word fell down. Fell down the tree. Okay. Raza and his friends quickly helped. The old man. The man felt thankful and lucky that he was not hurt. He felt thankful. Hmm, macam tak kena pula. The man felt thankful and luckily he was not hurt. Okay, kita kena tukar lah. So, boleh. I don't think this makes sense. Okay, luckily. Nasib baik. Ha, luckily. Okay, not lucky. Sorry, sorry eh. Uh, it's 12 o'clock, almost 12 o'clock, so that's why I'm a little bit sleepy. <laughs> Jangan marah, 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 nanti kena jual. Okay. So, the man felt thankful and luckily he was not hurt. Okay, good. So, Raza pushed the wheelchair across the road. The man thanked Raza and his friend profusely. Okay. So, kalau I clean up balik this story. Okay, so I'm going to clean this. Okay. Remember, yeah, time frame dan tenses has to correspond well with one another. You tak boleh guna time frame untuk simple dengan continuous tense. You kena guna lah time frame continuous tense dengan continuous tense. Okay. Okay, let's clean this essay. So, how's life, kids? Your school is going to open on the 22nd. But if you are in year 5 and year 6, then definitely uh, we are going to meet you on the 15th. Ha, ha, ha. Make sure you have finished my homework. Ha, ha, ha. Well, nothing going to happen anyway. If you don't finish it, couldn't be bothered about how you guys settle those things. You want to do this work, you do. You don't want to do it, it's up to you. Nobody can change your future unless you change it yourself. Okay, uh, okay, all right, I'm deleting light. Where else? Okay, fell down to fell off. Halim, okay. So we fell off the, the, the tree from the pension on the situation. If you're in the tree, then definitely you fell off the tree. Uh, maybe luckily. Alright, so if I count this correctly, this is going to be how much? How much? I didn't do the work. If you do the work count. Uh, why you didn't do the work count? Okay, never mind. Lah. Let's just clean up the other things. Okay, this is 112. Tolak Lani and helping a handicapped man. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be 108, okay? So this is 108. Nampak? Simple je kan, SAU. 
tak ada lah uh, idiom tak ada lah sangat tapi um, this would definitely help you to score in your section C uh, you see actually the standard is not that high you don't have to use the jumper you don't have to use all the idioms and those kind of things the only things that you need to show to the examiner is that you are capable of breaking free from making any grammar errors okay and at the same time your sentences should be coherent lah and your ideas flow well as well okay i think that is the most important thing but of course you can you can confidently secure good marks if you can show uh, another levels of writing tapi with this i think it's more than enough for you to get 22 and above okay if you show this to any examiners, uh, definitely, if they say it's less than 22, then I think something wrong with their standard. Right? But if this, uh, you can definitely uh, get more than 22, okay? If if the examiner is, is you know, very lenient, not lenient, like, I think, can appreciate the fact that you are still 12 years old, then you most probably will get 25 with this kind of script. Okay. One more time before uh, we end the session. That afternoon, Raza and his friends were walking home from school. They saw an old man in a wheelchair. The man wanted to cross the road. Raza and his friends pitied the man, so they planned to help him. However, before they could, before they could help, telepass. Before they could help, the old man. Um, let's change help to the word assist. Okay. Before they could assist the old man, uh, assist. Assist is another word for help, okay? Say so help, 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 you can Use the word assist. That's why I panggil assistant. Uh, ingat tak assistant, kan? Assistant, assistant ni pembantu lah. So, dalam perkataan assistant, there's a verb there, which is assist. Before they could assist the old man, the pedestrian signal turned green. The man crossed the road himself. Unfortunately, one of the tires accidentally entered a hole. The man wobbled and fell off the wheelchair. Raza and his friends quickly helped the old man. The man felt thankful and luckily he was not hurt. Raza pushed the wheelchair across the road. The man thanked Raza and his friends profusely. Okay. Or you can also say the man profusely thanked Raza and his friends. Okay. All right, kids. I'm going to end my presentation, stop presenting. So basically, uh, those are the errors that you can find in our fourth activity or section C activity three. Okay. Um, to be honest, I really look forward to meeting you guys at school because we have so many things to cover. Uh, but at the same time, I also hope that you have watched this video and learned diligently. Uh, so that uh, when we go to school, we don't have to cover things that we have already covered, okay? So that's it, kids. Thank you so much for listening until the end. And may God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you guys at school next. Uh, on the 20, oh, sorry, on the 15. On the 15. On the 15, I'm going to hug you and your books. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Sleep well. I mean, I'm supposed to sleep well, not you guys. Bye-bye. Enjoy your life. <laughs>